Hello, buddy. Today we're going to be looking at trying to use uh, VMware and also have Hyper-V enabled at the same time. What I was essentially interested in looking at was the new Windows subsystem for Linux 2, which essentially operates a Hyper-V virtual machine and allows you to use a Linux terminal on Windows. Now, the problem with that is that enabling Hyper-V by default breaks VMware and VirtualBox. Now, you can get around this by enabling the Windows Virtual Machine platform. But what I wanted to demonstrate was the performance, or lack thereof, of doing that. You can barely even handle resizing Windows. I think one way of looking at it would be to install Cinebench. Uh, let's just go for R15 because that's simpler to install and takes less time. And see, so how many cores do we have on this VM? 16. So with 16 cores, you would expect reasonably good performance. 16 uh, cores of this i9 should get a Cinebench a score of, let's just say 2800 is a reasonable. Should get higher, but 2800 is reasonable. Uh, this is practically unusable. Now, you can make this a bit faster by disabling side channel mitigations, which is essentially... It constantly flushes your CPU cache, which significantly negatively impacts performance. So I'm just sort of experimenting to see if this can be usable at all. I think I'm just going to disable Hyper-V because it also seems to even have a negative impact on the host system performance outside of virtualization, because the way Hyper-V works is unlike a regular VM, which just runs on the computer, Hyper-V essentially places your Windows system, the, the host one, not the guest one, under a, a transparent virtual machine that passes through all the hardware but is technically not running at the root level. So the result of this is that you cannot run any other hypervisor at ring zero. You have to run it through an API that is essentially nested virtualization which from previous experiments, never runs super well. One way we can see the limited performance is in this file expanding, which is running horribly slow. It's probably a single-threaded bench, a single-threaded bottleneck. You can see that, in theory, it shouldn't be super slow. This is a 100 megabyte file. This is not an intensive task, usually. And this is not a weak system, it is running on a Intel Core overclocked Intel Core i9 with 128 gigabytes of RAM. Without a Hyper-V running, it would run well. So this is, I'm just going to benchmark this so we can get an idea. This is a baseline, and we can make it run a bit better if we disable side channel mitigations. You can also, and I think this will make it run even worse, enable virtualization-based security on the guest, which we don't need. That essentially allows you to basically run Hyper-V in Hyper-V, I think. Now, what I haven't tried doing, and I'm sort of curious about, is what if I created a VM and enabled nested virtualization in Hyper-V? Would it run the same? Would it run better? So, shockingly, the actual CPU benchmark isn't horrible. That is lower than a native score, but it is nowhere near as bad as you would think. Like, this is behaving worse than really any system I have ever installed this operating system on. This is behaving worse than my uh, 2 gigahertz Pentium. So, I don't think a score of that is necessarily reasonable, but... Perhaps uh, some things are significantly less hindered. After I might try VirtualBox, which I've got running in the background where I've been attempting just to do basic things. I installed Arch Linux XFCE and that is practically unusable. So the impact here is massive. So let's now disable side channel mitigations, which essentially makes this work a lot faster. Doing this, it is usable. It is still much slower than it would be without Hyper-V enabled. So I still think I'm going to disable that, but I was just sort of curious to see if we could quantify how bad the performance hit is. VirtualBox is so bad that a 64-bit guest doesn't even run usably. 
That's still running extremely slow. But we can go here. Now we can run this again. See if it feels more usable. Let's open Chrome. I want to see if it can play a YouTube video. It's kind of just a general test. It takes forever to load, but... Hello, everybody. Today we're going to be looking at some potentially shady software called OP Auto Clicker. The subscriber commented about saying that they had downloaded this and then had immediately noticed some very... So it does play a 360p. Now let's put on 1080 60. Ah. And full screen this so we can actually give this a test. Seems as if 1080p60 is too much for Hyper-V VMware. Let's call it Hyper VMware. So it is anything but Hyper. Cinebench still runs shockingly well, which is really interesting. Data. Oh, it has they'll it often they'll go going? to local app data, which does two things. One is if you're in an active directory so it does domain, it seem to be able to play it, but it's slow. The main impact. Oh, that was worse. Okay, we're going to run that again. Is to do with memory performance. So, logically, it might not fully come across in Cinebench, which I know from seeing videos of people testing memory speeds, is basically memory independent. You get about the same score running 2133 as you will running 3200 on Cinebench, which is not real world at all. So according to Cinebench, this is worse. Now I'm just going to tap into our VMware, I mean VirtualBox XFC, just to show the slowness. Now, not going to, I was trying to update it and I couldn't even do that. It seems to glitch. Like, no such file or directory. This just seems to have slowly glitched out. Oh, now terminal opens. That's different. It wasn't working before. So there are some improvements. But this just seems to be slowly glitching out and getting less and less usable. I'm going to reboot this to demonstrate. Arch Linux, or Manjaro in this case, I had another Arch install which was just completely unusable. I don't know why this one has worked better. Let's just do re restart. Should take maybe 30 seconds on reasonable hardware to boot. I had it installed on this computer bare metal and it would take about 20 seconds to boot with GNOME. So the idea that it should take as long as this does, where even just lines are slow to appear. It's incredible. And here, uh, the VirtualBox devs have an interesting sense of humor because if you look, that is in fact a turtle to show that it is in fact running Hyper-V. Now I think if you're running 32-bit operating system, it's almost certainly just faster to just use software virtualization, which should never be the case. Software virtualization is usually horrifically slow. And in this case, this is an insane amount of time for a very lightweight Linux distro to take to boot. It's just a black screen. Okay. And there we go. So that is the insanely slow boot process. Now I'm going to reboot. I've already initiated the process for removing Hyper-V and all of its components, so when I reboot, we can run all of this the normal way, and we can see how much faster, or if it's the same, or if it's slower. It won't be slower, though, so we'll be back soon. Right, welcome back. So now I'm going to turn on Manjaro XFC again, and we're going to see how the performance compares. Now that we are running this, and as we can see down here, we do not have the turtle anymore. You can see how much faster this is. I've also got Windows ready so we can try the folder extraction benchmark as well. So it does just, it seems like the boot process for this is just a blank screen. That does feel noticeably faster. I'm sort of interested to see if it now, if the glitches are also fixed, because that was a big issue with this. See the UI is more responsive. Now, that's, that's usable. See if we can just find Firefox. That just goes. There we go. We're going to close these so that we can actually... None of that. 
just works. That's pretty much, it's like almost as fast as it would be on native. And that is like, that's close to a native system. Now let's go over to Windows. Here we got this. And already that is way faster. So this benchmark seems to be imp impacted by memory speed, which I think is sort of the main thing that doesn't work as well under the Hyper-V. Now that works. Now we can just, let's just test out. We'll go to my channel again and we'll put on some video. Let's go for, let's see, what do we want? Let's go for a classic, because some of these Hello, are- Hello today we're going to be looking at another type of- <laughs> I, don't know I, I picked I would... the same video it's by accident. another malware video where we're going- So I'm going to mute, mute the video just because we don't need to hear it. That is also much faster. Let's see if I can find one of my 1440p videos. I guess I can't. That's that's okay then. So this is just extracting. This file seems to be really difficult to extract in general. Now what I do want to see is if we get a noticeably better Cinebench score to prove my theory that in fact it is noticeably faster. Or if Cinebench is just, because of the nature of it, somehow completely immune to memory latency and the CPU's cache, which it pretty much is. It 3D rendering as a whole is very tolerant. I, I've tested this on many different systems that otherwise don't perform well, and it's a synthetic. It's like it's realistic to some degree if you're doing 3D modeling, but otherwise it can be quite a synthetic benchmark because it doesn't take into account other performance. 24, so that's dramatically better. Let's just give this another run because the first run of Cinebench is always affected down. 2500, in my opinion, would be essentially a perfect score. 24, 22, that's decent. Let's just see, because if there's other stuff going on, that's going to significantly affect it. Telemetry, okay. Let's just give this high priority, which is kind of cheating over the last time, but just to get an idea of whether we're seeing much of a performance hit on VMware. Twenty-four sixty. That is a good score. That is noticeably better than the other attempts, and the system feels much more responsive. We can go here. No, we don't need to save it. Chrome opens up. This feels much like. I'd say essentially like a native PC, which is what you want. And I believe now, and this might be the sensible way of doing it, because I was interested, the reason I installed this Windows Insider VM was to test out Windows Subsystem for Linux 2, the latest version that can run GUI apps, so I can now do that all within my VM. So I think that's going to be enough for this video. Please do leave a like if you've enjoyed it. This was just a look at the performance impact of Hyper-V on VMware and VirtualBox, the popular virtualization software most people use. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.